Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hi welcome back again so um let us start today's class by you know looking at some nice pictures okay and we won't discuss them just look at them and then we'll see what we're talking about okay so um let's go to this one and see if we can okay now this is a small slide i sort of put together it's a kind of flows you know possible so and these are also some sort of you know wide range of uh, stuff that uh, i'm interested in and um, i like to look at her work i do some work myself also right so i think this is a broad categorization of flows you know why that is necessary in fluid mechanics is something that um, you should acquaint yourself with you know why do we have to sort of uh, you know do this you know so broadly mm, you you would have um, say uh you know subsonic flows which is you know mach number lesson flows a uh, mach number lesson 1 and this is where you know we're going to tackle turbulent flows that we are talking about and you could have boundary layers as well in turbulent uh, flows um i do not know if we will be able to cover all of that in this uh, in a, in this course we'll see okay depends on the amount of time we have then of course before you go to a high speed or supersonic flows you know there is this where you have like shock waves etc there is this middle part somewhere you know transition phase where you go between uh, subsonic to high speed and that is the transonic flows which is mach number ranges between you know 0.85 to 1 maybe right and i've done some uh, work on this as well and then of course this is something typically which i uh do for a living almost which is uh, high speed flows no uh, sorry high alpha flows and typically for airplane wings um you know it could be for an angle of attack which is yeah you know little around more than you know 10 degrees 12 degrees so here also you encounter turbulence because uh, you know these are very high reynolds number flows uh the boundary layers are very thin they separate and moment you have flow separation you're talking about turbulence okay we also have turbulence in uh, transonic flows and um subsonic flows of course we have turbulence flows so this is to kind of drive home the point that uh, we are dealing with a topic which you pretty much have to deal with no matter you know what sort of flows you're dealing with so whatever you need to, you want to study turbulence is not something that you're not going to encounter so you know how you want to deal with it uh whether you want to learn it how much you want to learn it is of course uh up to you but this is you know an interesting topic which um would pertain to anybody who's trying to you know study fluid mechanics in general okay so um so for example these are you know some pictures that i have here okay so let's just say these uh, two you know these two pictures of oceans basically from a personal collection these are two oceans right one in hawaii one in goa right and do you see the difference between the two okay and if you see the picture right here for the hawaii uh, ocean right out here okay um you see the different colors is the same ocean the, the different blues right you can see waves and what's up with this white you know you must have seen this and also when you have boats when you have ships you see a lot of white and it's called white water actually okay this um so like i said we will not discuss this but uh i'd like you to sort of notice that we do have this white thing here right this uh, hawaii uh, picture of course i think is on a very clear bright uh in a day you know sky is very clear and you see the ocean looks like that right and this is in goa and clearly you can see the sky it is very overcast and ready to rain 
and the water is uh, nowhere blue interesting right and there's a lot of white going on here you know what is interesting is there's a lot of white going on here and um, what I would like you to do at this point of time is um, it might be a small thing but look at for example a tank of water you know anyway a small tank of water tank of water a glass of water for that matter the surface of that water try to compare the surface of that water with the surface of the ocean right here right yeah it's very large uh, but what i'm talking about is really the surface of the ocean and uh, the surface of say a water which you are carrying you know, in a small tank right or in a, in a glass right uh, sometimes we store water at homes so how does that surface look like right and why is it that these look so different right why do we have such um, white stuff going on here in this picture from uh, Goa right uh, there is white stuff here as well in the picture from Hawaii right this is on a very overcast uh, almost a rainy day whereas this one is on a very clear day right but then we still have that white thing going on here you know it will be interesting to figure out why right interesting to figure out uh, why we have this you know you will also see this kind of white stuff when you know there are ships and uh, you know even little boats and I'd like you to also uh, think of uh, a, a possibility where you're in a small boat you know maybe you've already faced this you know you're in a small boat and um, uh, yeah you're in a small boat and a big ship passes by or a big like a motorboat passes by you're quite far away actually right what do you think will happen you know wh what could you face and why would you face that okay those are questions you need to answer okay think about it okay so another thing is if you look at this is the smoke from a matchstick what you could do at home is a switch off the lights you know light a candle uh, yeah well just switch off the switch off the lights it will be very dark and study the smoke from an incense stick agarbatti right take an incense stick and just uh, sort of you know, throw light on it otherwise you can't see so maybe you know a small flashlight or something so you can do that and just look at the smoke study the smoke so this is as you can see this is a matte stick here right so you could and this is the smoke which is generated right so uh, do you see in in uh, why isn't the smoke like uh, you know a piece of a nice plain piece of cloth or paper right it seems to be winding up you look at these right look at this structure here how the smoke sort of winding up look at these here look at this right um, uh, if I were to sort of you know almost like uh, draw a section like this almost draw a section right here you know if I were to draw a section okay I can't do that there something like this here okay what does this look like right interesting so um, again if you look at that and this is an aircraft right this is an aircraft in flight and maybe next time you fly you know you if you try to look out of the window uh, maybe you can spot some things like that okay and here too what I see is things like these things like these right I see things like these here okay interesting so like I said we will not discuss this but you know nice to uh, see sort of an airplane in flight right and you have a smoke from a matte stick you know and you could just um, take a uh, take a uh, like I said incense stick and look at that do one more thing you know um, take a candle take a candle place it place it uh, like when place it near the incense stick like when you have an agarbatti right and see what happens to the smoke how is it different it's very interesting the switch off the light in your home and you now just for a you know 15 minutes and do this exercise you'll find it very very interesting and you'll see uh, things right in front of your eyes you know right around you okay 
Wow, this is a picture you probably have seen the one on the left hand side, right. So, this is uh, something you, you, you probably have seen earlier on, ok. And uh, so, this is an airplane again, right, a dye has been injected into the air and what you see around its edges again, you know, I might not be able to sort of point this out, you know, it, you, do you see this, the structure right there, you see the structure right there, ok. And this, the one on the right hand side here, this one, this is the, this is the uh, flight, this is the plane and this is the aircraft, this is the aircraft and this is what it is leaving behind it, this is the uh, structure which is leaving behind it. Again, can you, I think I can spot these things out here, if you see. And what is interesting, there is a small little eye in both cases, do you see that? There is a small little eye here, small little eye here, right. And then something, you know, really this is also smoke which is being done here, right. Interesting, ok. So, so this is from an air show actually, these pictures are from an air show in 2009, Aero India at uh, Bangalore. And uh, you know, these are things you watch on TV all the time and if you see, you know, the question to ask of course, is that you know, when you have things like this and when you, these are injecting smoke into the uh, air, right, it is all very nice. But why, so this, this, this is the smoke structure if you see here, why is not like a nice plain, you know, line pipes, why? It is all, all nice and wiggly types, right. So, why is not it like an in a nice solid pipe, why not, you know. But what is going on here with the smoke, how is this behaving, ok. And if you see here also, if you see in this picture also, in the smoke being left behind, you see the smoke being left behind. One more thing to notice would be, the smoke when it is right next to the, uh, at, at the time of the smoke being ejected out, you know, it is little thicker, you know, it will the white is kind of you know distinct and then it kind of fades out, then it kind of fades out, right. So, what is going on here, right, what is, what is this thing that you know, we have uh, you know, even different densities apparently, when I look at this, right, ok. This is a, uh, you know, these, this is actually uh, a photo of a, a tornado developing, right. It is actually a tornado developing. So, this is how the clouds, you know, uh, you know, this is the ground actually, um, there is a ground as you can see, this is the sky, it looks menacing actually. And then you see how every, so these are people in you know, a group of people actually, who uh, study, you know, uh, 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 cyclones, right. And they do this, and so they, so they have some very, very quite some magnificent pictures of um, the wonders of nature, basically, right? And um, so you see, each it, this is basically development of that, you know, development of this fluid flow, I guess, you know, every instant of time, and see how dark it gets, man. You see this, right? And finally, finally, you see something like this. You have this snout right here. And you see, this is the swirling mass of fluid, right? So that is essentially a cyclone. People call it different names: cyclone, hurricane, tornado. So we've talked about. Um, we've seen a lot of pictures, actually, of um, turbulent flows. And the one that you saw just now, you know, probably looks like one. But let's discuss that a little bit. Okay. So the. This is the typical contrail of an aircraft, right? the trail it leaves behind when an aircraft moves. Right? So, this is the exhaust from an airplane, right? And this is the tip vortices, as you probably you know, know. And um, as you saw the pictures, right? The question is that the picture, uh, when you see that, right, at the first look at it, it does look like a turbulent flow. But turbulent flow has certain, um, a certain characteristics, right. So, just because a flow kind of looks like a turbulent flow, is it actually turbulent? Does it follow all the characteristics that, uh, you know, are required to be a turbulent flow? 
I think we'll look at that a little bit in detail. Okay, and aircraft contrails are um, a good example of that. Okay, so not everything is turbulent, although they look like it you know, in the pictures. Okay, so here too, I'm going to cite um, a reference for you, so you can take a look at it. Um, so this is it. So for example, you know, transport and effective diffusion of aircraft emissions. This is the um, reference. So Gers, Jobek, and Konopka, Journal of Geophysical Research, 1998. Okay. So as I'm talking about, so the exhaust from the airplane, as you can see, right? These are the tip forces, right? So this exhaust from the airplane is, is isolated and concentrated primarily in the two wingtip forces, right? That's the, so the wingtip forces. And this is the primary weight. So primarily, most of the exhaust is actually concentrated in the tip vortices, and very, very strong tip vortices. And uh, this is the um, primary wake. Okay? And due to the uh, strong induced velocities of these two trailing vortices, right, of the primary wake, 10 to 30% of the mass of the exhaust gases is entrained into the surroundings, right? So because of this, it's entrained into the surroundings and that forms the uh, secondary wake, okay? Okay, so if you use your uh, right and thumb rule, you will see how the velocity vector, in which direction the velocity vectors will point, okay? Um, so, like I said, you know, the ten to 50, it's only ten to thirty percent of the mass of the exhaust gases is concentrated in the is kind of distributed in the secondary wake. Okay. So this is what we're talking about uh, here. Okay. Now this flow that you look at uh, is this turbulent or what? Okay. And it's like long, it's, it's, it's kind of traveling. Okay? These gases, which are you know, um, exhaust, right, into the atmosphere, and then they are traveling. So there is dispersion of this exhaust plume, and there are three uh, regimes to that. Okay? Number one being the jet regime. Okay? So, it's, it's, so the moment the exhaust gases are uh, generated, right, or are, are jet, or are basically exhaust from the airplane into the atmosphere, right, so what they do is there is a vortex sheet that rolls up into the counter-rotating tip vortices, okay. Now, this is, this is the jet regime. The then next, so that's the jet regime, right? The next is the vortex regime, right? But these step tip vortices travel downstream, yeah? Downstream, and the exhaust also sinks below the flight level, right? As it is stored in the primary wing, okay? Some of the exhaust is also retrained in the secondary wing. And finally is the dissipation regime. The dissipation regime. So this is essentially organized vertical motion, right? That breaks up okay, into turbulence and its energy dissipates. Okay. So initially, actually, when the exhaust gases are let out, okay, they expand freely first, right? Um, they expand freely. By evolving the you know tip vortices, they, they you know uh, they expand freely, but then the tip forces, because of the induced uh, you know velocities, they draw them in, 
and they concentrate that and they literally like trap them right in the vortex core right at the tip versus that's basically the jet regime that's how it starts out okay that's the jet regime so that movement right when you see the the two tails basically there the trails the contrails right it's not uh, turbulent there you know it's not turbulent there's to the exhaust gas is just there the reason it is all concentrated and in, in, you know, moving into lines is because of the induced velocities of the uh, trailing vortices, and they kind of, you know, keep them moving, you know, because of the induced velocities, and they concentrate them and uh, isolate them in the vortex core. Okay? And then that that is essentially the jet regime, and then of course it uh, they travel uh, downstream these vortices. Right, and they also sink below the uh, the level of the uh, in, in the primary uh, wake. Okay, that is the vortex regime, and finally, when it comes to the dissipation regime, there it breaks up. Okay, and breaks up into uh, the turbulence, and its energy dissipates. Okay, and once it you know, it sort of completes the dissipation regime. The aircraft induced motions, okay, um, ceases. Okay, it, it kind of stops. You know, it, the effect of the aircraft kind of stops, or so to say, the effect of the primary wave or the tip forces stops, and then the atmospheric processes transport and diffuse the emissions further on. Okay. The kind of that kind of gives you a picture of you know what's actually going on in the contrails, right? So right when it is sort of attached, you know, near the um, you know the aircraft body. Okay? So this is something to, to look at you know, the concentration, the exhaust concentration distribution. This is how it looks like, and this is this is a, a time varying description of how the concentration kind of looks like, how it's changing. Okay, so look at something like that will we'll give more details about the turbulent nature of it. Okay? So similarly, I'm looking at plots from the reference I cited. Right, for example, here this is a B seven four seven wave. Maximum exhaust temperature, okay, and entrainment rate. The, oh my God, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm looking at this plot here. Entrainment rate. rate. Uh, so jet is still about twenty seconds. Okay. Jet is about twenty seconds. Okay. My vortex until one hundred thirty seconds, right? And dispersion is after one hundred thirty seconds. And basically, the solid or the dashed, the solid lines indicate no atmospheric turbulence. Okay, solid dashed lines. Then here is the history of the average exhaust. Right. So, so I think uh, you know, as as if you look at this um, you know, reference. And between say 1.5 and uh, three minutes, okay, they really find that there is no uh, turbulence. So, like I said, it says finally at the, at the final dissipation stage when the effect of the aircraft has ceased, okay, then atmospheric turbulence comes into uh, atmospheric processes, transport and diffuse the emissions further, okay. So although you know, you know these contrails are actually um, you know, not turbulent, although they look like that. Okay. Also, um, so this is uh, this is a development of you know cyclones actually. Okay. Okay. Before I uh, do that, before I do that, so um, so just think about this. Just now in the previous slide, I was asking that. 
why aren't you know why aren't these why aren't these nice and you know plain you know and just like a pipe why aren't they like that just think about it if i did have fluid flow which would just be plain and nice and long would we have something like this would we have a cyclone where actually the fluid is going to you know whirl and turn around right it's going to be swirling so there's a swirling mass of fluid that's a cyclone right so that's what it is and then it it has this snout and this can be actually so powerful it can actually lift up complete buildings and I don't know, trucks and cars of course yeah okay this is very interesting i put these two pictures together which is very interesting the one on the right hand side this is actually you know the uh, storm uh, in the indian ocean in sorry in the bay of bengal which um, which is basically isla in 2009 and it's a uh, satellite picture okay and again something to notice here is this whole white thing going on here yeah and then again uh, i might as well sort of uh, point that out see again you have a little bit of an eye and there seems to be a lot this seems to be a lot of swirling of the fluid right would that would i be right in drawing that probably something like that okay interesting now um this is for you to look at right so this is the storm which has developed and this one on the other hand is nothing but your sink right so next time what you should do if you actually even have a magnifying glass or something at home right or even take a 50x zoom uh, in a camera or something i haven't done that myself maybe i should you know so just look at your sink that sink is a great source of information about a lot of things you know you have this uh, you know water which is in in, in a sink in a kitchen sink wherever you just have that and this is how the flow structure looks like it looks pretty complex to me right you could also do uh, things which you know uh, you could just uh, you know fill up your sink um, um, like use a stopper here you fill up, fill up your sink and then just um, uh, remove the stopper and see what happens right watch it make a video you know watch it over and over again it'll be fun you know try to do that Okay. All right. So I yeah. Well, you know, do, you know, so interesting kind of work going on with um, you know uh, in my group now. So uh, this is something. Th th this is uh, actually uh, we were working on uh, the flow across um, an airplane wing. Actually, so we do that, and uh, we were doing an oil flow visualization, you know, trying to see what's going on here, and. Um, so essentially the black part that you see here is where the oil has is not there right so it's all sort of it's sort of removed you know and uh, so um, so we're actually able to sort of see that you know and after that we kind of see that oil you know so we think that the flow comes here so this is the uh, this is the the flow is actually this way okay from top to bottom so the flow comes in here pushes the oil it pushes the oil into uh, you know the mm, along this along this edge right from the leading edge to the trailing edge so it pushes the oil in this direction which is actually the chord direction and then again it sort of leaves it you know the flow just is now leaving the surface it's not doing anything to the oil and again it sort of touches back and you know forces it out so therefore we think that this is a, a laminar separation the moment separation happens it has to be turbulent so now when i look at these things here too many vertical structures are in here too many flow structures are here some big some small some uh, quite distinct some a little uh, blurred out you know some large some small some very very small this is exactly how you know so uh, you know this is not smoke by the way and this is something we were seeing in the aero pictures like aero show pictures so this is uh, actually oh, we are using oil over a, uh, an airplane wing which we are testing in the wind tunnel okay so 
So, essentially what I am trying to show here is uh, on the slide. So, the, the one on the left hand side, this is how it looks with just the spray. We spray the uh, you know wing with oil, right. So, this is just the wing with the spray that is all, there is nothing going on here. We have not tested anything. Next thing you do is you place it in the wind tunnel and then you, then you uh, test this, right. Then when I test this, this is the kind of structure which is developed. Okay. So, this is what is happening going on like this. Okay. So, all right. So, I think we have uh, some of these um, uh, structures here. Okay. Okay. All right. So, now what we will do is we will look at a couple of uh, videos okay. and then maybe we will uh, discuss a few things for a while. Okay. Now, uh, this is very interesting. Okay. Since I showed you um, so, since I showed you that, might as well. Uh, okay, let me show you this. Okay, this is a slightly sort of a long video, but do uh, you know look at this? Okay, so do watch this. Okay, I don't have a sound for this. So, if you if you see from the left to the right, you see how the flow develops, right. So, initially just had the spray and now the flow is developing. Let us be a little patient and sort of watch this, okay. See what is going on with the flow, all right. I can speed this up a little bit maybe. or maybe not, we just miss out on a few things. You can see how the structures are changing and developing, how new structures are forming, things are beginning to happen right now. Yeah. Let me fast forward that a little bit. Okay. So you see this, I am going to so this is all developing, right. see how this is being sort of pushed, right. Slightly long video, so then you need a little bit of patience to watch this, okay. Okay, interesting, right. How the complete flow structure is now, a lot of things developed and now it is all been wiped out and it is all nice and clean, interesting, right. Okay, now I am going to show you something like this here. Now, this is uh, actually, uh, I will tell you, I will tell you what, what is going on here, okay. Mm, well, let us, we can watch the video for a bit and then we will say again. Okay, I am going to stop this. So, you have this, this is called a bluff body actually. You can see it is not very streamlined, it is a bluff body and this is at an angle of attack. This is, you can see it is placed at an angle of attack of 4 degrees, okay. So, this is uh, yeah and it is facing up to um, a flow which is uh, at a Mach number around 0.85 right which is in the transonic range that is what we are trying to do here. So, what is what we are seeing here this black uh, thing right here this black on the top and here this is actually a shock wave you know the boundaryless this is a shock wave and these things uh, these uh, you know undulations here right here is interacting with this separated boundary layer and you can see this flow this is very highly unsteady at instant of time. So, this is this video is made for a certain instant of time. So, let us watch this right. You see how this tail thing is 
the tail of that you know shock wave is moving right this is highly unsteady and then i'm going to just play that uh, one more time okay and then you see the unsteady uns you know this kind of a flow which is going on here the idea is that how would you define that flow so that this flow which is happening right it's a nice plane flow which comes in and then it encounters this body and see what is going on with the flow right now how would you describe this flow actually how would you describe this flow right that would be an interesting uh, question to ask okay now that same body right the same body now i have that with a spike okay this is very interesting and the same thing the same body along with um, it's in a mark 0.85 flow right so what you basically see is that we've lost that tail right and there's a little more this is a little more stable there is a flow uh, you know which is like quite um, unruly so to speak which is towards the edge right which is this la uh, towards the end of this whole uh, um, body near the neck actually it's, it's restricted to that unlike in the previous case okay all right i think now that you've we've taken uh, stock of a couple of pictures and you know some videos okay i think it's time for us to sort of uh, go back to our writing board and see what um, uh, we can do okay all right so now uh, i think the idea is here is now that you've looked at it okay so essentially i'm trying to see you know what is this turbulence and like a, you know, why is this even important you know is this such an important ph you know phenomena that we have to come and do a class and listen to somebody like for 40 hours 40 lectures right so the point is what is exciting about it in any ways right is it a bad thing or a good thing or what is this whole thing okay so let's figure out let's see if uh, you know things make some uh, sense and uh, you know we we can understand a few things regarding so essentially every time you saw some white water right every time you saw some unruly sort of behavior in gas also you saw things in water right and you saw things in um, air right so it could happen anywhere and also you saw that it could you know happen uh, in an ocean you know in an ocean uh, and it could also happen in a flow which is as high a speed as nearly Mach 1 right so it could happen at various so which I showed in the first slide itself it could be subsonic it could be you know transonic supersonic high alpha turbulence is everywhere okay so when you saw all that sort of flow what did you think how what are the things that you could probably um, you know when, the moment you see this you know how do you describe that flow so i think that's what i will do right now okay so if i were to sort of just say um, yeah my observations about a flow which you know which i see which is not nice and you know it's not moving and just by itself still it's just still how is this flow different from that right so that's what i'm trying to write out so let's just say um, i'm going to just write out okay and say the flow is unsteady we saw an example of that right uh, for the flow past the bluff body in the transonic flow unsteady and also the, the flow over the wing, right? When we're doing all flow visualizing, that's also very, very unsteady, right? Irregular. Random, yeah. I didn't find anything particularly orderly about this. It was pretty random, yeah. Well, Chaos is actually uh, a physical phenomena. I use the word chaotic basically, you know, as an English word here. Okay. So flow is unsteady. It is irregular. It is random. It is chaotic. 
motions of many length scales are observed. Would you, would you say that? Right? If you look at the videos again, um, motions of many length scales, like I showed you, you know, even the for the air shows, you know, somewhere it is, you know, quite, you know, close together, it's closely packed, now slowly it's sort of spread out a little bit. And then for the flow over the wing surface, right? Um, it was quite interesting because, uh, you know, slowly the flow structures, uh, you know, developed. Sometimes there were some was a little, little long, some a little round, some were of, of different sizes, of course, right? So, and motions were happening for all of them. So motion, of many length scales, motions of many length scales are observed. Okay. Okay, so these are this is something that we've observed, right. So to bring in the you know small uh, you know, things that I'm uh, pointing out here, so essentially, we are talking about, say, you know, this is this kind of this is what it looks like, right? So now, uh, should I tell you that this is what is turbulence? I tell you, and you believe me? Not really. But since you know, uh, people have been studying turbulence for quite some time, so there are some basic, you know, uh, understanding of that. So I'm trying to jot that down first. Okay. But we will observe this on our own and for ourselves individually as we go along and, um, and then we will sort of you know see whether all of these observations make sense. Okay? So, as of now I am basically kind of writing down or you know jotting down uh, the observations made in terms of what a turbulent flow will be like right with years of research. Okay? Now, fluid velocity varies significantly and irregularly. And irregularly. With um, space and time, that is. Right now, um, it'll be interesting if you go back to the Hawaii picture, right? And there were so many different blues, right? And even in the big ocean, there are you know a few places which is like really calm, you know, and then some places there was white water. Uh, places the the color difference is of course for a different reason, um, but definitely. The you know the the flow itself the wave the size of the wave itself is different at different places right so therefore the movement of the fluid which is you know fluid velocity is different you know it's it, it's varying quite you know significantly as we move you know in space and as we look at the same picture over instances of time right and there's no pattern to that of course you know so therefore it is Ill irregular right. Um, so, and therefore, studying how the ocean surface behave is a very is a very very uh, significant job for uh, ocean uh, o oceanographers, people from ocean engineering, actually. So uh, they, yeah, it's it's a very it's a it's a very very important study to do. So it's very difficult to say, uh, you know, the height of the surface of the, how the surface will behave, you know. It's very difficult to sort of draw a nice surface on the ocean. Okay. 
so all of these behaviors, no, no, the point is all of these, if the flow is unsteady, irregular, random, chaotic, if the motions of several length scales are present, you know, in the flow. So given, you know, a certain domain of flow, you know, there are motions which are happening on a large mass of the fluid, slightly medium mass of the fluid, slightly very small mass of the fluid, which basically I mean motions of many length scales are observed, right. And again, the fluid, velo the, the velocity, the fluid is moving very, very, uh, you know, distinctly, you know, and there is a very stark difference between the velocities of the fluid in the one place to the other. And there is, of course, no, uh, you know, regularity or regular pattern to the changes. Everything is irregular. And that is happening uh, over time and also as we move along into the domain, right. So, all of this is basically telling me that the flow is turbulent. Right. So, so therefore, this also means that if you have to study turbulence, that means these are all the properties of the fluid that will come into the picture. You see the number of variables that there are, you know, unsteady, then irregular, then random, then chaotic. You know, how do we quantify all of these things, you know, to finally say that I know what my turbulent flow looks like or can we even do that, right. So, we will do the best we can, you know, let us put it that way, okay. So, uh, we are not sort of taking on nature, can we, okay. Ability to transport and mix fluid more effectively, hmm. that is very interesting, right. Ability to transport and mix fluid more effectively than a comparable laminar flow. Not sure what the word comparable laminar flow would be. When I say, I guess, you know, uh, because the Reynolds numbers are going to be different. Comparable meaning in the, I guess, in the length scale, in the same length scale. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Now, now, just think about it. Now, if when you add sugar to your tea, you shouldn't, but you do. So when you do that, how do you mix it? If somebody says mix it, what is the best way to mix it? Think about this. When you mix, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen this, um, but if there's really, really hot milk, right, and you want to sort of, uh, you know, make bring it to the room temperature so that you can drink it, right, then you take that glass of milk or in the bottle of milk and you pour it, you know in a quite a distance and you do that, you keep pouring between the two, uh, you know, vessels, two, two glasses maybe, you keep doing that, right. So you do that and when you pour the milk, you should see how that milk, you know, have you seen, you know, it, it kind of, it is almost like a pipe and it reaches the other one, have you seen doing that, right, interesting. So when you do that and it does cool down, it does cool down pretty effectively, you know, try this. So you do that, right. And or just keep that glass of water, a glass of milk under a fan or something or just leave it, just leave it at room temperature. Eventually it, it will cool down, eventually anyway it will cool down. But then why number one do we switch on the fan maybe and why do we do this? This seems to be very effective, you take it between two glasses and then you do that. Why do you do that, right, interesting and when you do that you see how that same milk behaves. Right. Does the flow, does the milk flow structure, is that different? Okay. It is a look at. So now, like I said, you take uh, in your tea, you, you put some uh, sugar, you know, and what do you do? Right. You take a spoon and you stir it. You mix it. Say you mix it. Right. So, um, so when you have, so basically you take it, right. You take the and you just move it randomly, you know, just stir it like that, right. So, therefore, some random 
or chaotic or uh, irregular movements is useful right if I want to mix something right. So, a turbulent flow should be good in that right turbulent sh flow should be good in that and that is why I said just uh, think about it. So, therefore, when the smoke comes out you know what is going on there you know smoke is it, it will have particles right. So, you have smoke right and then you place it near as a heat source which is the candle see how that will behave right it will be very interesting. Okay, So, ability to uh, transport and mix fluid more effectively than a comparable laminar flow that is your turbulent flow. Okay. Now, there are some um, the, uh, this is something which is so Osborne Reynolds experiment okay. maybe you can sort of remind yourself what this is or if you are not aware just look at a you know, basic textbook and you should be able to get that ok. So, uh, the back in 1883. So, Osborne Reynolds uh, experiment is essentially is characterized by Reynolds number. by Reynolds number right. So, essentially you have a pipe ok is a fluid flow right which is happening. There is a fluid flow which is happening right and then then we inject dye right along the center line right and this is a uh, pipe now for this particular uh, you know experiment so he basically the Reynolds experiment he basically came up with certain values we basically said that Reynolds number is less than 2300 means the flow is laminar Reynolds number is larger than about 4000 it is right. So, whether the flow is laminar or turbulent definitely depends on the speed. So, it is essentially dependent on more th more things than than uh, uh, just speed. So, therefore, it is essentially it is characterized by the Reynolds number and these are some values that Osmond Reynolds came up with you know uh, in the uh, 19th century actually ok. All right. So, now again ok let us uh, let us go to that one ok. So, a turbulent flow yeah well like I said you know it it, uh, it the turbulent flow consists of different uh, motions at different length scales I think we have spoken about that right. So, ok let me still write this. So, turbulent flow consists of motions in different length scales ok. So, well this is trivial I guess this is small size small scale turbulence and large scale turbulence I guess. Okay. Now, 
this, this I think we just said that you know we we we've been seeing that also in in, in you know on, on the turbulent flow that is around us you know and I think it's high time now that you start looking around and see you know essentially everything is right here in nature it's around us you know so we don't need need to really lock ourselves in a room and you know look at a black thing and then only learn things you basically learn from everywhere you know you just you just notice things right you see a little when it rains you see a little muddy puddle right and you see the, how the water behaves and you see a little bit of stream that has formed you know just a foot long and you see how the water is you know skipping over small little rocks you know you see little white waters there as well in such small scales also you'll have turbulence right so obviously the turbulence that you're having in like in a mud puddle in a, and in a rain you know in a small little drain right outside your you know house maybe and then you also have turbulent flows in a big ocean in a small part of it on a big part of it in a large scale part of it so when you have large you know waves you know you have white water there and then when you saw the water is essentially calm but in a little place you have a little white thing going on right so turbulence does consist of several uh, motions in very different large uh, you know length scales so uh, the small scale and the large scale right so the small scales now so now now next question is then what makes it large and what makes it small so now we're getting into the groove right okay so small scale motions um, depend on the rate at which they receive energy from large scale motions and viscosity these are independent of flow geometry okay so i'm going see right now i'm going to just write these down and uh, slowly as we move in uh, you will see that you know things will explain themselves i guess okay as we discuss so small scale motions depend on the rate at which they receive energy from the large scale uh, motions right motions they depend on viscosity they are independent of geometry so I'm not going to dwell on this too uh, too much because we're going to study this in detail, right? It's got something called an energy cascade. So when we get there, we're going to study this, okay? But from what? But it, by this time, you must have thought that you know, if there is so many motions, right? The energy has to come from somewhere. You know, where is this energy suddenly coming? Uh, you know, where is it getting this from? Because, like I said, you know, you have a nice uh, still water. You have a nice still water in a pond, but then in a lake. But then suddenly you go to an ocean and then you see all sorts of movement, right? Where is this coming from? It's getting its energy from somewhere, right? So why is it that some are big and some are small, right? Or is the one which is big at a instant of time given a location, is it going to remain like that? No, like we said, it's all very unsteady and irregular and chaotic. So that's going to change. If it's going to change, it's going to change the size, sure, right? So then what will happen to the energy now that it's smaller? Right, it needs less energy. What happens to that, uh, you know, uh, you know, that extra energy? Right, so it, it, it can't be destroyed. So it will be transferred to somebody. Right, so uh, then it, so that so therefore, and maybe that energy is small enough. So then there will be a motion which is on a small scale. So that is what I guess at this point, uh, you know, the way to understand what I've just written is that the small scale motion depends, you know, at which rate. Uh, they receive energy from the large scale right and of course the viscosity and it is independent of the geometry right it doesn't depend on the 
geometry. Okay. So, large scale motion is strongly influenced by the geometry. So, large scale motions are strongly influenced by the geometry, right? And they also control transport and mixing. They also control transport and mixing. Okay. So, good I think we will. Uh, so, that is about to say I will you know I think um, nothing more to explain here. So, we will sort of do it in the next class. I think what we do start doing next class is looking at now that we have sort of got some idea of how turbulence you know uh, what turbulence is and we have uh, you know looked at pictures etcetera how turbulence is all around us etcetera etcetera. Let us look at some of the very uh, basic equations right. So, essentially I am not talking about it is it is not like a density you know. So, how will you define this turbulence then you know. So, when I said that you know we have um, a flow is unsteady irregular random chaotic what is you know. So, quantify it what exactly in the flow is unsteady irregular random and chaotic I mean this is something nice to talk about, but then if I had to write a computer code you know trying to understand uh, a, a turbulent flow what will I tell it what will I tell the how will I direct the computer code to solve my problem right. So, then we will need some kind of variables you know what are those variables what is it that is unsteady irregular random and chaotic you know what motions of many length scales if it, you know if this is happening then density is changing viscosity is changing what is going on in turbulence right. So, those are the type of things we will get into slowly right and what is going on with the. Uh, so, I think we will start looking at equations and uh, this is still sort of introducing the whole concept of uh, turbulence. So, that is that is what that is where we are going to uh, go into right. So, we are still trying to really understand what uh, you know the sort of emotion is all about. So, all of this let me just sort of say that. So, all of these things that we these properties you know essentially what we are talking about here this is all of this is essentially nothing but turbulent flow these properties right and the next one also here of course I have written it the turbulent flow is so and so. So, these are essentially the basic um, you know gist of how turbulent flow behaves and consists of right how it looks like and we have seen some pictures and seen some videos of that. So, I will stop here and take it up again in the next one ok. Thank you very much.